All right, I think it's half past. We should get started. Um, I'm Lynn Brown. Uh, I've got some other introductions to do in a second. But <clears throat> first, what I'd like to do is ask you by uh, hand raise, who is a laptop that doesn't suspend resume properly? OK, all right. Do you have it with you? No, OK. Who is a laptop with you that does suspend resume properly? Okay, almost everybody, okay. All right, so um, what I'd like you to do is um, join me in a round of applause for this guy because he's the reason that actually works. Okay. Yes, thank you, Raphael, for your decade plus or two decades or unstoppable uh, dedication to making Suspend Resume for all of us. Thank you. Um, let's see. My other uh, helper is uh, Sleepgraft maintainer Todd Brandt, and after you use the tool, maybe you'll be applauding for him as well. Um, he's hopefully remote. I don't actually see who's remote right now, but um, uh, I suspect he's online and he can answer the detailed questions on Sleepgraph itself. Um, so what we're going to do right now is, um, I'm gonna do like the world's shortest introduction to suspend resume, just in case somebody walked in and doesn't even know what they are. Um, and that will be a repeat probably for a lot of you. And then we're going to go right into using this tool because I want you to leave running this tool and knowing how easy it is and how useful it is and how powerful it is. Uh, uh, I think it's awesome. And thank you again, Todd, for writing it for us. And then I've got a bunch of rambling slides about interesting topic, interesting topic. And I'm hoping you guys will say, here's an interesting topic you didn't think about or or what have you, and that's more of the discussion q and A section. Okay, so let's get right to it. Um, in Linux, uh, SysPower State is the user kernel API to invoke a, 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 um, a system suspend on a laptop. You may see these words; they may not be in that order, but they're ordered that way because the ones on one side save more power. Hibernate to disk saves the most power. It's a cold off state where a freeze, also known as a suspend to idle, um, is the fastest and the least power saving of all of them. Uh, standby is sort of deprecated. You, I haven't seen standby on a machine in, in a number of years. Inside, uh, so a lot of GUIs use mem as the only state, like when you press the button. And so what happens is we had a transition where we have systems which basically suspend to idle by default now because they have a low power idle. And so to co-opt mem, uh, this file says, hey, the hardware says you really want to use suspend to idle instead of ACPI S3 in the case of an Intel laptop. So um, the kernel will actually set S to idle to the default there, but you could override it if you wanted to go the other way. Here's a picture of that. Um, red is bad, red is power. So the more power, the worse that is busy. Uh, is, you know, your running state um, active idle, you know, the purview of CPU idle um, is a, a fraction of that. Um, and so uh, if you're not running anything, you get that sort of for free. Um, your system suspend state, so freeze can also result in active idle. If you have a system without low power idle, it would basically give you the same thing as runtime idle would give you. You know, you're in C6 or, or what, what have you. Uh, if you have a, uh, a low power idle state, it's significantly um, less power. And uh, today, mem, which could go to S to idle, as I said, or it could go deep as a synonym for ACPI S3 on, say, an Intel laptop. Um, uh, that's, in the old days, it was, it saved more power than uh, suspend to idle. But uh, today, it's neck and neck. It depends on the implementation. Uh, basically, uh, you want to use what the default is because the, the OEM decided, hey, we've got a great low power idle. Um, it's better than S3, and, some and, and so you should use it. Um, and if they don't export uh, low power idle as the default state, you should probably use it. And they, def they export S3 as the default, you should use that because that's basically what's tested. Questions on that? Good. All right. So I want you to whip out your Linux laptop right now. And um, if you've got a, uh, a Linux kernel tree, I don't know if anybody has a Linux kernel tree. If you do, you have sleep, you have sleep graph on your machine already. 
and didn't know it because it's in under source Linux, it's under tools power PM graph. Or if you're on the network, um, you can git clone github.com intel PM graph. Do this right now. If you don't have a network, I do have one thumb drive. <laughs> USB-C, USB-A. Um, and uh, I really, you really want to, you, you, I have some screenshots, but it's much more fun if you have your own local, uh, local result you can play around with because you can do some things I can't do on a static slide. Um, and then there's the make install. It actually doesn't build anything. It's a bunch of Python scripts, and, um, and it, it just installs them to where you can execute them. All right? Tell me if you have that. Somebody say you have this on your machine right now. Do I have at least one customer? Two? I got two. I got two. Do I have three? Do I have three? Do I have a third? Okay, three, four. All right. Okay, so do I need to leave this on the screen for a second? You know how to get to that URL? Um, okay, so now we're going to run sleep graph. And um, actually, actually, I, actually I, I left off the S yes, you do. Yeah, you need to run it as root. Sorry about yeah. that. And um, there's a couple of options. So remember, we we're talking about freeze versus mem. This says, I don't care what your default is. We're going to try freeze. We're going to you know, change that file around. So we're going to do suspend to. Um, this has been to idle. Uh, dev is an option. I'll show you what dev does. It puts a little more information because we're developers. We generally like more information. RTC wake five says, hey, great, sleep. Set the RTC to wake you up in five seconds. The default's longer than that, so we usually use a shorter one. Um, and oh, out there is just where you want to put the stuff. Um, if you're following along with the slides, we think we have got some pretty decent documentation. Um, so you can click on these if you download the slide deck. The README is in the source file, and it's actually quite detailed. Maybe too detailed for, for our discussion here, but it answers pretty much all questions. So uh, this is what you'll see on the screen. Um, this is the command line I just said, sleep graph, freeze, dev. I have the yes, SU do on it this time. And um, first thing it's going to say, you know, am I root? Yes. You know, do I have F trace? Yes, and so forth. Down here, um, there are some optional tools which enhance our output. They are optional. If you don't have them, that's fine. But um, you'll get more information about your suspense, particularly if you're debugging it, um, if those tools are installed. <laughs> I get syntax error. Oh my gosh. So, so as you do, so MSM Street, or oh, out there. Uh, get rid of the slash. Let's try that. Yeah, it's probably uh there you go. So we'll report that to Todd. Todd, if there's a slash on the end of the output directory, that's my guess. No, you got something else. Syntax in the Python? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Is this are you running it from the Git repo or from the kernel? Kernel tree? Okay. Kernel tree is a snapshot. I actually never run that version. Unmatched closing brackets. Sorry, I can't hear you. Unmatched closing brackets. Todd, there's an unmatched closing bracket. Oh my gosh! So here, here, try, try what's on here. Um, this is from the Git, Git repo. You can trust it. I formatted it. I formatted it right before this. Yeah, if you, if you pull from the Git repo, um, try that one. Yeah. But anyway, let's. Uh, I'll show you how how it works. Um, and this is what you'll see on your screen. Um, OK, so to view the results, that's the same invocation on the top in out there. Choose the browser of your choice. Start on HTML. There's actually one HTML file. <coughs> um, and when you look at that file, you're going to see this. OK? Um, along the top, you know, uh, what's my host name, my kernel? I'm doing a freeze when, on what machine? Suspend time, 517 milliseconds. Um, freeze time, remember we said, please give me five seconds. Well, we got, you know, 3.8 uh, in this example. A resume time just under half of a second. Um, this picture here, time goes from left to right, and it counts down until you get to this SR thing right in the middle. Um, you could put a gap there, but we like to use all the real estate, so they're stuck together. That 3.8 seconds is between the S and the R. Um, and then you count forward until uh, you're fully resumed. In this case, it's the kernel resume time is, in this case, 489 milliseconds. Now, 
a couple of things to see on here. Um, you know, uh, there's a summary for this, but obviously the 915 is sort of the slowest device we have, uh, both to suspend and to resume. Uh, Jesse remembers the old days from when that was around 10 times longer. It's way better these days. Uh, usually it's related to the display rather than the actual GPU. Um, USB is uh, right behind it. This is actually pretty typical. This is an Alder Lake system actually that I have in my hotel room right now. Um, and so if you see something faster than this, I would consider that a fast machine. If you consider something slower than this, I would consider it uh, not as a fast machine. Um, all right, so um, you can zoom in on, on these. Uh, you can also uh, hover, we'll talk about it in a second, uh, like this SCED timeout, you can say, who is doing the SCED timeout? That's really helpful. Uh, you know, typical culprits are, uh, you know, ACPI methods with sleeps built in. Um, there's a couple of other sort of killer ones. Uh, if you left off the dev, so this, this slide actually shows two, two things. One, if you left off the dev, you don't get the, you know, the timeouts because we don't have the K probes, but this one's actually a mem, as you can see in the first line. And so on mem, you see this extra thing here, firmware resume. It may be lying to you, but it's trying to tell you in a table how long the firmware took. So if you did do the ACPI path and went into the BIOS and then back out of the BIOS and way back, that tells you how much time you spent there. That's not plotted on here, but when you're comparing suspend to idle and ACPI, that's one of the big differences is, is this firmware tax going through the BIOS. Um, another thing I meant to say is if you have something that's in red like this, you can hover on that and click on it. It will take you to the D message. So here we've got, um, well, this one has F trace, which is another option, but uh, you can click on this as the D message of your suspend and then the log. Remember those commands like LSPCI and that stuff? All that stuff for that, for the run is in the log. Um, sometimes very helpful. Uh, let's see, here's the dev version and uh, we already showed dev and we already showed mem, so I think we've done that one. Um, oh, here's an interesting option. So there's an option, sometimes you care about how long it takes to suspend, do something very short and then suspend again. So there's a special option called X2, which says back to back. That's why there's sort of two of everything. Um, and with the proc option, it will trace all the processes that are running. So you can see SleepGAF itself is running and uh, you know GNOME shell, and you can see how much CPU time it's using. Uh, so you can see if there's user space getting in the way of your, your race back to getting to suspended, all right? Um, okay, so um, originally we created SleepGraph I think it was called Analyze Suspend originally. And um, we were sort of obsessed about the performance because we thought our performance really needed improvement and that's what we focused on. Uh, and then the performance got to be acceptable. And we'll talk about, maybe I'm interested to know what acceptable is uh, in your opinion. Um, and uh, uh, then we got to a point where, well, okay, but is it, is, it, is it reliable enough that we can basically base a product on it, right? And we can talk about how reliable that is, but the tool became a stress test tool in addition to a performance and a debugging tool. And so the way to do a stress test is this, this is, um, well, oh, stress out. So <laughs> we're stressed out. We'll send it to stress out directory. If you add the multi- 3.0, 3 means do three iterations, zero is just how much time between. We're also gonna add this Wi-Fi option, I'll show you that too. Um, and then it will create a subdirectory where all your tests are and it will summarize them all for you, okay? So you could do, um, you could do, yeah, you can do this in a number of ways, but we'll just show you the example of uh, the summary for, for three. This is what you'll see if you did 100, you'd see of these, it, it estimates when it's gonna be done based on how long it's gone so far. And at the end, it's actually writing three files. The summary, there's a summary for devices because you may be trying to identify the slowest device. Um, and then there's also uh, um, a summary of issues that is found. It, it looks through all the logs for keywords like, you know, uh, you know abort or, or panic or, you know, all these really nasty words. and. <laughs> You know, we'll show you those. So here's a, here's a summary file. Um, and since we've got a three, we have a fastest, a slowest, and an in-between. 
And so the min suspend reading from left to right is, uh, you know, 465 milliseconds. It happens to be in the last one. So if you have a whole, you know, file of these, you can actually click on the guy and find him in a list of a thousand or what have you. If you want to say you're looking for the worst case, you can easily find it. Um, similarly with the resume. Um, then we single out for each one, what's the actual device, the device which caused it to be so fast or so slow, uh, both for suspend and how long that one took. Um, so um, this guy was, you know, 291 milliseconds for, for I-95, uh, 288, 279, and that's on this particular machine, the slowest device. Um, similarly for resume, usually we're worrying more about resume time than suspend time. And sometimes there's situations where you can pay the piper for suspend time and then uh, you're faster on resume and sometimes the reverse, depending on the device. Ah, so the other thing is we add the Wi-Fi option, okay? So in Wi-Fi, it's, it's gonna track how long it took to reconnect your Wi-Fi. A lot where to, many people would assert that you really haven't done a suspend resume until Wi-Fi comes back. I really can't use the machine if I don't have a network, right? So, so this is pretty important. You click on the detail for that guy and it will take you to the, um, the, the graph we just looked at. Let's see, that's just the files. Um, I think I have a Wi-Fi example in a second. So when you have a, when you have, um, a lot of data uh, um, and you've got it, in this case, you probably can't see, but that's going back to like 515 up to 66. And, and this is the laptop I have in my hotel room. And uh, so this is its um, uh, freeze uh, on the 90, on the Dell 9315, and uh, the percentage success, in this case, endurance. And so we have some tools in the, the which, are, which help summarize this data, and they're in the Git repo. The graphing part we have internally, we don't have this in the tool, um, but we can, if you wanna set up your own database, we can help you use those tools if you wanna graph things and summarize them, uh, just get in contact with us. Uh, or you can send us our, your data and we'll be happy to throw it into our system and, and graph it for you, yeah. I was curious um, if uh, there's any functional aspects of test with key, the value of testing with real uh, hardware. Test in, test in virtualization? Yeah, uh, I'm just trying to think about the other areas in the kernel that need uh, proper testing and if this uh, has been used in KMU to find a... So RTC, really? RTC wake is the default wake device, but if you had another wake event, this, the tool's perfectly happy with it. That, it. It needs some kind of wake event. No, I understand. I'm just saying. Yeah. All right, I guess that, that answers that. Okay. Yeah, so you could do, you could do that. You could. Um, so, so yeah, we don't, we don't, it's very convenient uh, the way that we do it for uh, automation, but uh, we also, uh, we test wake up with magic packet sometimes uh, when we're screwing around with that. You could wake up in a number of ways. Uh, if you have another wake up source, that's perfectly fine. The tool really doesn't care. It just, uh, it will, it will work crash. fine when it wakes up. Okay. Okay. So uh, anyway, if you have a bunch of data and you want to summarize it, you can send it to us. Uh, some distros do that today, um, and we look at it for them. Um, and uh, we can also help you summarize your own data. All right, so if you're doing it endurance testing, there are a couple of gotchas. If you did it right now, you would probably start with your screen on, and then there's some other thing over in the GUI that says, hey, after five minutes, turn off the screen, and then your, your results will all You'll, all, you'll, you'll see your, your speed change because you're now going into a suspend with your screen off versus with your screen on. Um, uh, FS trim, actually this is, this is an open bug right now. A couple of file systems kick off an FS trim and it happens to be at midnight. And we're looking at our data and going, we got eight machines for here and they all have this FS trim bug at midnight. We're like, what the hell? You know, and it turns out they all kicked off this, this um, 
uh, this FS trim uh, at the same time, uh, what happens is uh, it, uh, it, it, it refuses to suspend and then it kills suspend, the suspend gives up, and then it runs for sometimes a long time, sometimes like five minutes. It's really, uh, really quite a bad design. It should be fixed. Um, let's see. Uh, when you're doing endurance testing, some things are, are transient, but some things fail and then they stay failed. Um, the network's one of them. Sometimes your, your network goes down, stays down, and then you go into the next suspend without your network. Um, and it says, well, I didn't have a network to start, so I'm not going to worry about it to finish. And then you're not really testing what you wanted to test. So uh, we actually have one of the utilities you saw in the beginning was Netflix will just say, damn it, I'm bringing the network up no matter what, you know, it, it, it does software hard reset, hardware reset. It does everything it needs, it, it can possibly do to get the network back. Um, and we need this both for wired and for wireless. Uh, so anyway, those are some gotchas. Uh, so yeah, here's the detail for Wi-Fi. And so the kernel resume is 504, but then Wi-Fi on this particular example is 100, another 190 milliseconds, which is not great, not terrible, but not we've seen, you know we've seen worse, we've seen better. Um, and then the total is here. We don't actually plot the Wi-Fi part. It's it's pretty boring. You can ask to plot it if you want. Uh, one thing we've noticed is this depends a lot on who you're connected to. It may it may depend more on your access point than the actual device you're testing. Uh, I notice this because I, I move around with the same machine. I end up in a different hotel room or something, and it's like, you know, it doesn't work like work work at all here, and it worked great somewhere else. Um, so you got to be careful about that. Yeah, uh, toss the mic over to this guy here. Hey, hey. Look out. Uh, I was thinking the same thing about it's depending on the AP actually responding, right, for the Wi-Fi. So would yeah. it make maybe more sense to just measure up until your device sends out that first association request and say, like, we tried, and that's that's the best your device well, can do. Well, so we tried, you know, in our we have a lab, okay? We have around 30 machines. We're develop we're not a testing lab. We're a development lab, and we co-op our development machines on, on weekends to run these tests. And... Um, and so we have some control over that, yeah. So usually it doesn't change on you. I'm usually not on a train or, or in transit when I'm running this. So it, it sort of is what it is, but I'll, you'll find like, sometimes this will be three seconds and sometimes it's zero. Sometimes you come up and it's already on, which is the best. I mean, that makes sense in your lab, but what about like if I'm doing it at home and like, or I'm, I'm running it yeah. somewhere that I don't trust the yeah, Wi-Fi maybe, network. Maybe we want a shortcut option right now. Uh, Todd has this thing where he's pulling uh, some sysfs file that indicates you're connected to proc something blah, 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 wireless. But yeah, you're right. There might be something more deterministic. Um, good suggestion. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that's sort of all I have for screenshots and, and use of the tool. If there's any specific things on the tool, now I'd like to, um, how are we on time? Are we keeping track of time? We're at 54 and we got to a quarter past. Is that right? Okay, great. So I have a couple of, I have a couple of slides which, which are I'm kind of going to try to impart the wisdom we have, have learned, but also questions for you. And if you have questions for me, this is a great time to uh, just throw them in there. So I think we'll all agree that job one is if suspend resume is not reliable, nobody's going to use it because your session will get lost, right? Your, your whole idea is you want to save your session. So that's job one. Uh, job two is if it takes a long time, they're not going to use it either. They're just going to leave the system on and shut down at the end of the night or, uh, or, or what. So today the acceptableness measure seems to be around a second. All right, for a laptop, you know, a lot of people use a, a, a lid to open and close, and, you know, you took half a second just to get the lid open. Um, however, that's not the only use case, right? We have a touchscreen. Really, people expect that to be instant on, instant off, right? You want to make it look like the system never went to sleep. Um, and the third one, which is probably the hardest, is that, you know, if a packet comes in and you do dark, dark resume, screen stays off, um, you process the packet, you want to get to sleep. All that time that you are awake is time that you're not saving batteries. So really what you want to do is, you know, you wake up, you want to get to sleep as fast as you possible, and, and, and you want to reduce that, you know, that X2 time, you know, that, the time to the next um, wake up. So I think these are sort of the drivers. I don't know if there's any other drivers for, um, 
for performance acceptability. That's where we're at today. Uh, how much endurance testing is enough? Well, the most important is that the very first suspend works, obviously. Um, I find that, you know, if you do it once, you might as well do it 10 times. Um, it only takes a few minutes. Um, and the most functional issues you'll find in the first, second, and then there's diminishing returns. After three minutes, you're in, you're in go get a cup of coffee or you've set the machine aside, you might as well do a thousand. Right, so when somebody says we're doing 50, I'm like, well, well, why bother? Right, um, do a thousand. Um, there are device transient issues which we've run into. We never would have found that FS trim issue if we hadn't run over midnight. Um, in our testing, usually a machine, if you if you do it overnight, it's either it's either a 12 hour or 24 hour run, just for practicality of accessibility to machines. Uh, we have some, some distros and some validation people who say uh, 10,000. I don't know where 10,000 came from, but today it seems the gold standard is if you have 10,000 and everything's perfect, ship it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's where we're at. Uh, if you have any other opinions on that, I'd be interested. Um, let's see. One weakness which... Uh, one weakness, which I think I've mentioned already, is um, you know, dry, device driver and their suspend method can return failure. Uh, and if they do, the core says, oh my God, you know, there's, uh, you know, you're driving a car and we don't want it to drive off the road or who knows what this device is in, in charge of, uh, so we abort the suspend. It's generally, in our experience, bad. It's generally not a good idea. The classic counterexample would be I've closed my laptop, I've thrown it into the case, it's, it's in my lap, and now it's, it didn't resume, I'm, you know, I wake up and the battery's dead. And so, you know, we really, you know, this is the architecture, and, and so right now what we're in, in whack-a-mole when drivers do this, we tell them not to. That's sort of, do you have a question on this? A lot more comment than question. I mean, uh, I would say I agree with you unless you have spinning rust in that machine. Because if sp spinning down the drive fails and you think you're suspending while your drive is still running, you you'll be in trouble, yeah, like big okay. trouble. So you're worrying about a, me a mechanical system, right? The other one I picture is we used to have these tape drives. You know, you can't shut off the power when it's got the tape is flying in the air or something. So, yeah. No, but so th there are still. I mean, that's that's the the problems I'm dealing with. There are still a lot of people with with um, laptops that have uh, a 2.5 inch ATA drive in there. Yeah. And so. Yeah. Yeah. So the, some, the analog, some care world, the needs analog be... world needs a veto, basically. So it has one. Yeah. Super interesting talk. Thank you. This is also the question is, is it um, more important to terminate or not terminate if something fails, right? It depends so, on who you are. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So. I'm thinking like you're saying, it's generally better to not terminate, but if you do not terminate, then you could get into like a power state that's like not really deep enough and you don't reach uh, S2 idle and then it's in your backpack, but it's yeah. still. Whereas if you do fail, now the, 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 the user space can now keep the retrying. Fantasy begins. Right. Yeah. The fantasy is that somebody deals with it. The problem is I close the lid and put it into my case. So nobody's doing anything. Some software could look at it. But in reality, what we have is sort of like, uh, oh, in the previous resume, some device failed to load its firmware, hardware error, reset three times. And then the next time we suspend, it says, hell no, I'm, I'm, I'm totally screwed up. And then we're like, well, now, you know, if we suspended, if we suspend into BIOS, that, that thing might have got healed by getting a, a big hammer on the head by the BIOS, a reset, or just the fact of reloading it again might have fixed it. So, problem of some driver people thinking that they are the most important people in the pla on the planet because and their driver is obviously the most important driver in Linux. And therefore, if it cannot suspend, then the system should not suspend as well. Uh, but the, the reality is, in the majority of cases, that you, you, user may not even know that the device is there. Because it's like a Bluetooth adapter that's never turned on, actually, by right. the user, or similar, right? And 
The so, cases we hit are what Raphael talks more often than yours. I acknowledge that the real world exists, the analog world exists. I yeah, and, and that, that's why there is a way for a driver to refuse yeah. to suspend, right? Because there are legitimate cases in which that is the, the, other mic. the thing yeah. you should be doing. But I, I was going to, to comment a little bit more on the, the case I raised is that uh, say your you have spinning rust on your laptop fails to spin down on on suspend. Uh, if you continue, what is going to happen is you, you're still going to cut the power to the power drive, which out. is fine because then right. it's going That's to spin bad. down, part the head. Yeah. The problem is that users complain because then they see if they go to their smart uh, smart uh, data, they see unexpected power loss counter increasing and. Yeah. That and, would definitely be a bug. Yeah, we shouldn't. And do that. we shouldn't be doing that in the first place. We get sure. it. Sure. We get but it. Et cetera, but etc. Uh, but I, I would agree. Continue on that case. So there might be a there might be a better way to please both both camps on that one. Uh, the second one is, and we were talking about this earlier. So we've got the um, we've got runtime suspend versus system suspend. If a device runtime suspends. Uh, it's possible that then we system suspend, we can leave it suspended, we can come back, we can leave it suspended when we resume and the, and the suspend resume goes faster. Or there's another case where it needs to resume, particularly if it needs to, on the, on the system suspend path, it needs to PM runtime resume so that it can arm its wake up devices. And then we've got to wait for it to resume so that we can suspend. Um, and and, and that, 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 that's something we run into. I think this mic this mic's not working so well. Uh, no, no, no. So I need to stand up because then people don't see me. Uh, so I, I would like to comment. So there is a difference between runtime PM and suspended resume uh, regarding the, the handling of wake ups. So the, the runtime PM will always enable device wake up uh, because it, it you know it has no reason not to do that. Uh, whereas for system sleep, the, the user or the admin decides which, which devices are wake up devices. So it very well might happen that your system, that, that, that your system, the, the, the device uh, can wake up, but the, the sysadmin doesn't allow it to wake up the system as a whole. And therefore it has to be reprogrammed on the way into system sleep. And so it may be necessary to resume it from runtime PM suspend and uh, and reprogram and then suspend again. We need both cases, which you really don't want to do if you again you have an HDD because resuming thing takes like twenty seconds. Oh yeah, until yeah. you speed up. I'm not going to say that I don't care about ATA drives, but. I'm just going to let you know that you're uh, the only one in the room that has one. I don't want to care uh, as well, <laughs> but I'm the maintainer and I have to deal with people complaining about Touché. problems. So. Okay, acknowledge. Okay. So anyway, this is this is something we wrestle with, and so I thought I'd highlight that. Um, there was a UConf uh, session uh, on Android. I don't know if we if anything there bubbled up that we should talk about here. I looked at this. I'm sorry. I think Raphael was there. I saw the slides. It was a lot about the dependency, the device dependency uh, ordering and some... Yeah, so this is a slightly different use case because we are talking about laptops mostly here, right? Yeah. But uh, Android has a usage of system sleep, which is much more like a runtime kind of thing. Because Runtime's they, a big they, deal. They suspend a, a lot and resume a lot. Whatever sc screen goes off, basically, uh, an Android phone will suspend. Uh, and then resume when you turn the screen on. So they, they, they really are on the, on the very far edge where they need super short suspend resume times and, and, uh, and, Instant and all of that and, and the architecture is different. So, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know if it, if anything architectural bubbled up, why we get a mic over here? This is perhaps a little off topic. Maybe I'll talk to you afterward, but, it, um, it would be, I would be interested in a little more background on how the skip and autocomplete stuff for runtime PM works in conjunction with, um, with regular suspend and resume because it, it doesn't seem like it. Okay. All right. It doesn't seem like it works the way you'd think it would work. But anyway. Okay. Maybe it's broken. Okay. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> so a couple more lessons from the endurance lab. 
Uh, consistency is remarkably difficult to maintain. We talked about the Wi-Fi router. In our lab, somebody comes in and changes the BIOS or the device firmware, you know, says, hey, I just updated the distro. Um, my favorite is, you know, in the, uh, I travel along the East Coast, I end up in Florida and my machine took longer to suspend with Zoom and because something was waiting for the temperature to lower, it was warmer in Florida. <laughs> like, I, we did not expect that. Um, I'll probably say this a couple of times. We can test the same machine over and over. You know, it's diminishing returns when you get past 1,000. What we'd really like to do is one test on 1,000 machines. It's more valuable than 1,000 tests on one machine uh, because most of the problems we run into are devices and we get to the diversity of devices across different machines. Um, uh, for us, a remote automatic power reset is invaluable, but you know, we've also got some prototype machines in there and so sometimes that's super, super useful for those. Uh, for some reason, we, 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 we start to use these USB Ethernet things. Those are a real pain. I don't know if there's a gold standard for them, but they're just, they're, we're always ripping them out and stamping on them and putting a new one in. Um, we talked about Wi-Fi uh, wired. We talked about preventing suspend. Um, oh, yeah, here's interesting. So, yeah, performance regressions happen uh, constantly, even up through RC8, uh, we find. Um, um, a majority, majority of, 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 of issues we run into are, are device specific. Actually, here's a list of some interesting bugs. Um, let me see. Yeah, so some of them very interesting, very, very recent. I mean, uh, thank you for rewriting the console driver, but 100 milliseconds is a long time in our point of view. Um, we do get, uh, we do get to bisect. You can look at those later. I don't think we have to have to. Um. Dig so, into any of those. Yeah, so, so one comment is, I'm not sure if you have that on, on your slides or not. So we use that uh, uh, test uh, infrastructure for regression testing a lot. Like uh, we test every kernel version that comes every out. Every RC, the, yeah. And on and, and to catch regressions. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know if that graph I showed, it showed all the RCs along the bottom axis. And so it's actually a pretty good cadence for us because we get access to our machines on the weekends, and that's when a new RC comes out, um, or at least it comes out on Sunday. And so it's great great time doing overnight tests. Nothing's going on. Question. As a developer, how can I try not to break Suspender Zoom for you? Um, the best way is to test it before and after whatever you do. Um, uh, if you, probably the most important thing, and Raphael will reinforce this, is that when you have a new device that it has suspend resume support, a lot of people will write a driver, here's my new device, yes, I've, I don't know, sent a packet, received a packet, I'm done, right? It's like, well, no. And uh, copy the other device drivers that actually have suspend resume support um, to make sure that that works. It's, that's really the biggest gap is, is like this, no support at all. We've talked about a little bit about low power idle. Low power idle depends on devices being in a low power state. And sometimes you may benefit from having a, even a skeletal driver that just gracefully turns this thing you're not using off because sometimes if you don't do that, it interferes with the entire system getting into a, a power saving state. So a skeletal driver that does that before the, the big fancy one's ready, that's useful. Um, there are other like hints, like if you if you already have like a suspend method, maybe don't use them sleep in it. Yeah, do sleep. something else. We're like, waiting for you when you're sleeping. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I have another right, question. So. I have a question about your testing. Um, yeah. In your lab, when you are your devices plugged in, or are they running on battery, or do you like plug them in and mock out the battery? To... We have a, all combinations, but usually what often what we do is we disable the battery and put it on an AC power meter so that we can monitor the power for, for other reasons. That, that's a, sort of a, like a form factor device. So we sort of have to do some surgery on it. Not all devices allow you to do that. Um, so we have all combinations. Yeah. Very cool. Um, oh yeah, so here's another random topic. Uh, hibernate to disk. We've been neglecting it for years and then we're starting to hear about people are using it again. It's actually disabled by default in Fedora, Ubuntu. It's configurable in SUSE without any surgery. 
Fedora and Ubuntu require some, you know, advanced administrative skills. Um, the reason is that the images aren't, 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 aren't are not encrypted. Uh, I don't know if there's renewed interest, and I don't know if Hibernate will be used more often when that is addressed and um, and it's easy to enable again. But I, there's not I don't know, opinions. It's being used for virtual machines. Um, if it's cheaper to run virtual machines at certain times of day when the cloud provider is less busy, then they will suspend a disk and be launched when it's cheaper. Launched later. And yeah. suspend a disk is being used for that. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 what we've heard. I don't know if there's yeah. other use cases. And we're using it on Chrome OS now, so we're integrity and it's working pretty well for us right now. So we are trying to send things upstream to improve it as well because it, it is important. All right, so maybe Chrome is pushing this. And so from, from a user's point of view, will they know uh, Hibernate versus Sleep? Will they have an option? This is a product decision that's still in okay. progress. But I mean, as of now, the primary things we're trying to address is your battery is about to die. You don't have to lose all your work. Right. On Chrome OS, the default behavior is shut down after a couple of days. Now we'd right. rather Hibernate. You might as well Hibernate, right. Exactly. Yeah. With Chrome OS, we don't do options. What you get is what you get. Yeah. There's so from uh, from the Fedora perspective here, since Fedora is mentioned over here, um, in Fedora Workstation and Fedora KDE, we are very, very interested in having this work again. Actually, I was asked on Monday to find out more about this. And so that's uh, I was trying to find the requisite people about this. Um, so if this actually does become a thing again, like we will instantly turn it on for Fedora Workstation and Fedora KDE, and it will be available I distinctly as both sleep and suspend mode. Yeah. So we want it like now, like um, very now. Yep. Um, from the Android perspective, um, there are some devices that would benefit a lot from this because Android takes a lot of time to boot. Being able to sort of have the system ready to go from an image ready to flash resume. and then yeah. like for example you turn your car on instead of waiting like a right. minute for the ivi to come on yeah you sort of unsuspend from disk um yeah. that will be way much faster yeah unfortunately our unsuspend from disk isn't particularly fast it's faster than it used to be um but uh but yeah reading an image is is ready to go you can have a lot of stuff already initialized um so that that is a savings there yeah. Um, so yeah. I guess the input is that, okay, yeah, there's still simmering interest for this and maybe some active use cases right now. Uh, we've, we really haven't been paying a lot of attention to it. I mean, when a bug's filed, we'll, we'll look at it, but it's not something our team has really been testing. The main problem for us that why we have it turned off in Fedora is because it's automatically switched off at the kernel level when lockdown is switched on in Secure Boot. Right. So you can't do it without some way to... Um, make sure that the, the RAM state, that's when it's saved to disk, is not able to be um, hijacked and manipulated when right. it's offline. Yeah. So that's supposedly what their guys' work is supposed to fix. Yeah, so to address that, we have it, we're doing DMCrypt, DM integrity, where the encrypted payload is derived from the user's password. And then the integrity metadata is also layered with DMCrypt with right. a key derived from a TPM. So we're all right. That's how we're addressing We have two minutes, so let me just hit my last two slides, see if we have a couple of punchlines. It seems like I, I hit a sensitive topic, which is great. Um, <laughs> so um, the lessons are, you know, we've achieved a certain amount of endurance, but we found that we need to constantly test it because we do get reg regressions all the time in every RC, particularly RC1. But um, dark suspend resume is particularly important for the speed case. Uh, Low power idle, I didn't really talk a lot about power, but from an Intel point of view, that's sort of the, all of our laptops go out with that today, and it, it has it basically has to work. ACPI S3 is sort of dwindling, but it hasn't completely died yet, and uh, Hibernate we just talked about. I think in the next 10 years, um, we do have these other states. They're still in use. We still do have to support them and test them, even as we lean into, say, like the suspend to idle case. Um, and we must continue to test, and we must, uh, uh, and we should try to test on more a more diverse set of peripherals. So, like you guys from the distros, we would love to have you guys every night. You know, give me a thousand tests on uh, some interesting assortment of machines. Uh, our team would be happy to look at 
your failures because it's something we can fix before it gets upstream or before it gets to a customer instead of the worst case is, oh my God, the customers are failing. Can you help us with this thing? And then it's a big emergency. It would be much better to get it done before it releases. Yeah, you got a mic for this guy. Big question, the fix for the closing bracket, do I send it to the kernel tree or to the GitHub project? What is, huh? Okay, thanks. <laughs> so quick question. Um, when, if we run like a regression test and we see that something fails with suspend resume from upstream and we identify which patch it is, what do we do with that patch? What is, how, how does it get oh, well, reverted? Well, an upstream like patch, you know, you can, you can report a regression on LKML, you know, you know who wrote it because you have the patch. There's kernel bugs, though. It depends on the subsystem, usually. Okay. But that, that's something you can always do. So there is a list, uh, uh, Linux dash PM, uh, the VJR. And uh, you can CC your, uh, your uh, bug report to it. So, we, so, so you know, we know that there's a system resume issue. And then, you know, let the regression trackers pick it up. And, you know, and off you go, basically. Uh, Linux-pm at vger.carol.org. Yeah, yeah which, is, which is in the maintainer's file. Yeah. I think, I, I don't, are we kicking us out? Have we hit your time? Yeah, OK. I'm afraid we're after. Mm -hmm. You know Raphael, you know me, catch us in the hallway. Um, thank you very much.